Hey guys, pleased to introduce to you the M1 Garand. According to George Patton, this was the greatest battle implement ever devised. One of the things you definitely didn't want to look at is this during World War II or the Korean War. And even went into Vietnam in limited action. Served in so many nations around the world and in so many conflicts. The M1 Garand is one of the greatest battle rifles ever produced. The Canadian-born John Garand is the one who developed the M1 Garand. And it was the first semi-automatic rifle to be issued to any major army in any numbers for the first time. Issued in 1936 to U.S. forces, this rifle became the mainstay for the infantry. Complemented by the M1 carbine, the M1 Garand was just a rifleman's rifle. Now, beside the gun being very reliable, very accurate, it did hold an eight round clip for a semi-automatic rifle and this surpassed most of the armies during World War II which carried a usually five rounds in a bolt action gun. The only gun that came close to this as far as a main battle rifle was the Lee Enfield which held a boxed magazine of ten rounds but the Garand could outfire it every time. In fact the M1 Garand could fire forty to fifty rounds in a minute accurately at 300 yards. The Lee Enfield averaged about 38. Now the M1 Garand became the rifle caliber 30 M1. That was the official military, U.S. military designation. You know, it's funny, I saw some footage back uh, during the, uh, during, in Haiti. This is, of course, uh, a few years ago with uh, Aristide. But the military was still using M1 Garands. South Korea has been wanting to sell their stockpile of M1 Garands and carbines back to the U.S. And uh, Obama has stopped that uh, sale. So call your congressman and let him know how displeased you are that he is holding back these great American weapons. These guns were the reason why we won World War II uh, as far as with the infantry. Now, there were many companies that made the M1 Garand, but Springfield Armory it was the developer. Uh, uh, John uh, Garand worked for Springfield Armory, but also Winchester, H&R, uh, uh, International Harvester, and even Beretta, which Beretta made some really cool versions of these. Uh, they did make a tanker version, which is a shorter version, and then they also made a couple of sniper versions, which was the uh, M1C and the M1D. And the two designations mainly have to do with the mount on the rifle. But highly accurate, incredible rifles. These were replaced by the M14 in 1957, but they were used all the way up until 1966 in Vietnam. One fascinating side note is that in jungle warf warfare in the Pacific against Japanese, the, the infantry a lot of times moved in columns. And as a one person with an M1 Garand could shoot a bullet through three soldiers effectively. So the 30 6 became notorious for a deadly, deadly caliber. Now a few things about the M1 Garand. Of course it has a, an aperture sight on the back that's fully adjustable and then a protected hood over the front post. A nice, very nice sight. This is the gas system. Here is the swivel, the sling mount right here with the traditional leather sling that went on these rifles, of course, at the rear. Here is the trigger, and then here is the safety right here that can be depressed. This is the operating arm right here, and this is the way the gun is actually cocked. Now, unfortunately, I shot <laughs> All my 30 out 6 ammo when I was shooting this thing, which is easy to do with the Garand. But eight rounds fit in here, and I'm going to have a picture for you to look at. And then it just slides straight down in here. 
The one thing you don't want to do is is to push this without retaining the operator rod right here because what will happen is you'll have what they call um, grand thumb and that means this thing will slam forward on your thumb and it is extremely painful. One of the things that will happen is, is when this is empty, it shoots straight out. Now, if you want to empty this clip before the gun's unloaded, you'll need to depress this little uh, clip here that re that'll pull this, allow you to pull out live rounds in the in the end block clip itself. These were just a, a great during their time. This was a really innovative design, and of course nowadays we've gone of course to the box magazine, but really effective during its time. Here's the lone <laughs> 30 out six round that I have left. Uh, they just fit like this in the in, with eight rounds staggered. Now the Grand started out at about nine and a half pounds. It was a very hefty rifle, but according to the the wood weight, this could weigh up to almost ten and a half pounds. So there was almost a pound difference, and uh, it has a 24 inch barrel from here to here, and then the overall length is 43 and a half inches. But I'll tell you, it has a very, it has an excellent balance to it, and it just really points very well. Just a, an American classic. Now, while there there are a number of different kinds of bayonets, some are even really long. Here's just a couple of examples here, and uh, I'll just show you. In fact, I'm going to do the long one first. This show you how this thing fits onto the rifle. Very solid. This button will release the bayonet. That is one more weapon with that bayonet on it. Of course, here's a shorter version. It fits a little differently in here. Has a little bit of a different... pulls right out. Like I say, there are a lot of different ones. I'm not an expert on these, and to be honest with you, because of World War II and Korea and parts of Vietnam, there is a lot of history behind these, and I'm not going to get into all of it because it would take me forever to do it. But this rifle is just a classic and has a lot of history behind it. Of course, here we have a uh, the steel butt plate with a trap door. That's for your cleaning kit. Nice hardwood. Here's the official Department of Army technical manual and uh, the numbers here. These are available around. You find these a lot of times at gun shows, but it has a lot of the different facts about how to take it down, break it down, clean it, etc. This here is put out by the Civilian Marksmanship Program, which I was talking about a minute ago. And this does a lot for uh, civilians being able to purchase these. Uh, just a great, also a great manual in itself. There's a lot of information out there about the Garand and uh, a lot of history. So if you own one, uh, you can easily find information about it. I highly recommend these rifles. Now with standard issue ammunition, these M1 Garands had a range of about 440 meters. But with armor piercing rounds, they would reach out to 875 meters. They had documented casualty cases up to that distance. A very highly effective rifle. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun reviews and sensible survival. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Most of the time, the columns, I just can't get it, where a lot of columns uh, were taking part in the compact, on the conflict. Yeah, I can see why the Germans were a little bit leery of this one. Incredible.